absolutely. All right, let's start. Um, so building an open source hardware manufacturing world, it's uh, quite a catchy title, I think. Um, we, are bu we are building this project, we've been building this project for about five years, and uh, we are nowhere near finishing at all. So let's go through where we're at, and uh, I'll welcome any questions at the end. So first of all, who am I? Um, I'm a game developer for PC. That's what I do most of the time. I've also worked in Fab Labs in France, which is where I'm from. And now I'm also building makernet.org with, uh, with a, a team. And uh, I've been active in open source hardware since I read the culture books, because this seems to me like the most plausible and desirable future we could want for humanity. And as I am a game developer, you will see very nice sci-fi pictures throughout the whole, the whole presentation. Uh, but we are very serious about what we are building, and uh, it's just to give a, a sense of bigger picture, which I think uh, building anything without having a bigger picture in mind is not really worth. I mean, as a research, why not? But I also believe that the best way to predict the future is to build it. And uh, so the first, the first picture on, on the right is my future house and garden. Uh, open source, of course, which I will invite all of you to join when it's built. <laughs> okay. So I'm not alone in building this. There is uh, Andrew Lamp from Field Ready and Pierre-Alexis Siavaldini, which is, uh, who is my co-founder at makernet.org, as well as, as uh, a lot of other people who help us and also challenge us. Um, we, uh, a quick thanks to the Shuttleworth Foundation, Standards Repo, the CERN Open, Open Hardware License, Field Ready, of course, and Dassault Systems for their funding, hosting, advising, connecting, sharing, and uh, all other helps they provide us. So, the summary of this presentation. We are building a marketplace for open source hardware manufacturing. This is makernet.org. We are also developing a lot of open standards. Uh, some of them are called Open Know How, which you can find on the website openknowhow.org, and Open Nowhere, which uh, doesn't have a website yet. And I will also invite you to join us by uploading your designs to sell them. So let's start with explaining a bit what makernet.org is. We want to build an open source hardware manufacturing world, and for that we think that the designers as well as, as the manufacturers should be paid. And I, we don't see uh, open source hardware as not being equal to getting uh, paid, wait, too many, too many conditions in this sentence. So well, we think, we think people should get paid for their work and being open source uh, is not getting in the way of that. So the website is, uh, is a big assembly of a lot of things to gather three type of people in there. One, we have designers who will build the blueprints, the designs, the files, and update them. And this is hosted on a Git repository. We have manufacturers who will receive manufacturing orders. And we have clients, like people who browse Amazon or Lazada or whatever uh, marketplace you can find online. To make all of this work, we want to have as much, um, to include as much as we can. So we have, we are using Dassault Systems uh, spatial library, which allows to convert between all 3D file formats and 2D as well. 
So the library is not free, but it's, we make it free of use on the website. So anybody can use it, and there's no, no payment required. And I think, we think this is a very important piece of making everything work, is that there's an interchangeability inter between all, all the file formats that people are used to. We don't want to impose things on people. We want to include as much as we can. And uh, another, the last part is the storefront, like Amazon. So this is where we're barely getting into that. So we have a very rough one. It works. Uh, but I think this is a yet another huge thing to, to manage. And one, one quick thing before, um, before I continue. So we're, we're doing that. Uh, MakerNet is a company. Uh, so for profit, open open know-how and open nowhere are non-profit things, and we do not think that we have the right answers. What what we are trying to do is to find them. So if we are wrong, of or if another company is doing a better job than us, we'll be very happy because our end goal, once again, is to build uh, a world, not to make just a single website uh, better than the rest. Although, if we achieve our, our goals, it should be better. It should provide more value and a more resilient way of manufacturing and having, um, yeah, having a, a new world. We'll go into the, into the details of what benefits this open source hardware manufacturing world brings. So uh, then the open standards that we need to, to make this marketplace work. And we are, we are also perfectly fine with other marketplaces using these standards. And uh, some are actually, we are collaborating, for example, with uh, Wikifactory to build these standards. So. We want to have a standard for step-by-step -step industry uh, stand yeah, standard open hardware recipes to be able to, um, in the future, make them machine-readable as well as human-readable. We want to have a standard for contracts, and uh, we'll see later an example of why it's not as easy as it seems, because we want to we want people not to worry about contracts while having full transparency and also the power, let's say you place an order for a thousand pieces and the workload is divided among many manufacturers. We want the contract to handle that, not the person who orders. And uh, of course, um, the last uh, but very, very important and we are barely scratching the surface is quality control. All of this does not make any sense if what is manufactured does not, uh, is not reliable and is not up to the expe expectations of the buyer. By the way, the three parties I mentioned, manufacturer, designer, and uh, buyers, they could be any two or three at the same time. There is no uh, separation. It's just a separation in where you're at on the website. Then we have open databases. Uh, this is open, no, open nowhere. We want to have maps of machines and tools around the world. And, uh, and this, this needs to be open because uh, it, is, it is something that will never be complete and needs to be updated all the time. And I don't see why um, we should not make it available to everybody and everybody can take part of it in it. We also need to have skills and people. This would come at a, at a second time. It's not uh, vital to make things work, but it will be vital because the more we computerize, the more we can do later. And I'm sure once these databases start growing, we'll see a lot of um, unexpected uses of them. And as of course, uh, we need a materials database because the manufacturing world we are suggesting is also very good at doing local manufacturing 
And let's say you want you to have your designer chair from Italy, but you live in Japan and you'd rather have local wood used. We need to make sure that the woods uh, match in terms of physical properties. Otherwise, uh, you wouldn't really get the same quality of a chair. I'm, I'm talking about uh, less visual qualities and more about just making sure the product works as intended. Uh, of course, the example of a chair is a very straightforward one, but uh, the same the same can be thought of uh, for electronics or uh, more um, intricate and complex pieces that are assembled. Some parts could be replaced, and we need to know uh, where, how. So um, now I I can pretty much think that uh, a lot of a lot of you might think it is an ambitious project. Yes, it is. And the thing that is nice is that it's already working. It's at, at, at a tiny, tiny, tiny scale. But we have all, all the required elements of the chain to make it work. Uh, we are currently having a little trouble with our payment providers, but we are just switching. We were using PayPal and uh, we have to change. So let's go through the benefits for the designers. I think uh, from speaking with a lot of designers, they're first, uh, they're worried about not getting paid because they associate open source hardware with many fallacies. They think it's for learning. They think it's you do that as a hobby and you deliver it to the community or uh, you don't finish a project, so you just put it on open and you see what happens. And never do they think that they can be paid or even make more money by going open. Meaning uh, releasing their their blueprints to everyone under, under any license, but uh, we recommend a CERN open hardware license. And uh, they would benefit from improved design designs by global collaboration, exactly like what we see in uh, the software world. I think the only reason why open hardware hasn't picked up is the ease of use and the speed of iteration of modifying and uh, manufacturing hardware. In software, you can just download things, run it. I mean, it's a matter of seconds. Hardware is a little bit slower, so it's and, and there are many more tools, m less standards, because it involves more steps you need to get out of the computer, involve many skill sets. But we are clearly seeing a trend towards simplification. Um, I can just, just in, on top of my mind, I'm thinking of the SketchUp software. I mean, it, it's so easy that anybody can use it. And I think uh, it's important to think of speed and ease of use so more people can take part. Then we have uh, manufacturers. The thing is that manufacturers, uh, in the way we are thinking things, would be like Uber drivers. They would get jobs sent to them, and they can decide to take them or not. And this, uh, this also scales to more more things like we've been talking with um, with an airplane company in located in France I cannot uh, disclose which one it is but they're they have recently bought a lot of small manufacturers around the world and what they intend to do is to unify these small manufacturers around the world as a big manufacturer controlled online so this is another thing that could could be considered a benefit. It's quite far away, I think, uh, to be something real, but it's to keep an eye on, as I think the future will be much more distributed and we'll see less like huge chains who repeat the same motion. Or it's not, it's not like 100%, it's 
we'll see a transition and it will be like a gradient. More, more uh, smaller manufacturers in addition to the, to the ones that are quite big and mass produce. Then the benefits for customers, I think this is the most obvious one. This is what I, what I got from reading the culture books. We, have, we want to have locally built, on-demand, customized, repairable products. Because if, if you think of it, why not have the products that you exactly want instead of what the market offers you? We are not there yet, of course. These are all future wishes. Uh, the customized part uh, can be can be done, but uh, yeah. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot of tiny pieces that change completely the way we think of it. And I think once we have most of it in place, we'll find it hard to go back to having standardized products. And one of the things that that is very important is full transparent manufacturing information. So on the on the right, uh, this is a this is a just a, uh, a label that we would make per product, generated automatically, because we have all of the information from the open standards and the open databases. We can uh, exactly like uh, Nutrition facts, you know, the US nutrition fact sticker, I think it's very important to display the same on hardware. This way you know where the money goes, you know what materials it's made of, and you have uh, ideally this QR code who would link you to through all the informations of the build when it was built, who built what, following what version of the plan, so if you want to repair just a part of a machine, you know which version it was, you know, you have access to the file as it's a Git repository, so you have the full history. You have the license, you have everything. So this, this is just a dummy product, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, but we, we would also have this uh, cute picture, I think it's important to, to make it look uh, interesting and to appeal to people to look at this information. So why are we building this? Um, the main reason is to promote knowledge sharing. We think that knowledge sharing in hardware is, is, is not sufficient compared to what we can see in software. I've mentioned why hardware is slower, but I think we can see a trend in more and more sharing of hardware and it's important to develop better hardware because software relies on hardware. Uh, we want to make collaboration easy for hardware. All the, most of the designers we talk to there have no standards. They still name their files version one, final, final one, final two. They use Google Drives or Dropbox, which is okay, it works, it's not bad. And we also, we'll, you can also import Google Drive into MakerNet in, uh, in a few clicks. Because we want to make it easy for people. We don't want to impose new ways of working that, are, that don't, don't make sense. So collaboration is very important. We want to make it easy to manufacture and sell products. The story of my co-founder is that he was designing uh, an adaptation to a 3D printer, and he wanted to, uh, to sell this improvement he made, but then he had to go through the hassle of incorporating, understanding tax laws, how to sell in different countries, how to contact manufacturers. So as a beginner in the, um, in the hardware world, you get a lot more barriers to entry than, uh, again, software. And again, we don't see why in the future it shouldn't be as easy. They will, it, will never, it will never be the same, software and hardware will never be the same, but uh, hardware could learn a lot from, from where software has been, and I think uh, it's a great inspiration. Transparency in the production chain, as I said, uh, I think this is important as well. Uh, databases for people, skills, machines, tools, and materials. Um, having, you know, in, if you start, if you start 
uh, to learn about anything, I think you have to measure it. You have at some point to start measuring it. And you cannot measuring, measure it if you don't have the right units. And all these databases are, um, and standards are units of measurement. And once we can measure things, we can improve things. Otherwise, you're just aiming in the dark uh, and hoping that you get better. And also customized products, so for the end users. Um, I'm again talking, talking uh, using an, a furniture example, but uh, you can think of much more advanced. But did you ever, like, you have a new place, you want a table that is exactly this length, and you go to whatever store and it's not exact so then you have a small gap or it's slightly too big or you have to adjust and there's not there's no real reason why uh, the future could not provide you with exactly what you need again uh, furniture simple example but you can uh, apply that to many more things and yes because we think it's how manufacturing should be I think where manufacturing is at right now is um, just a side effect of where society has been and understanding like this global connecting everything then I'm not going into into um, into globalization and stuff like that but uh, we see trends in in the US in Europe to go back to local smaller um, things Let, let's let's talk a, let's take a small example uh, that is uh, related to the virus. Um, in France, there, uh, there are only two factories who are able to produce masks. And they ran out uh, in the first weeks. They sent them all to China. So France is relying on other countries to get masks, um, although they have manufacturers in France, but not enough. So I think this is a clear example where the governments and the and the and the states are seeing that there is a lot of weakness and a lot of uh, vulnerability in having everything manufactured in one place, and also we see a loss, a uh, clear loss of knowledge in. I mean, I'm talking for the countries that I know, so U.S. and Europe, but I think it's the same everywhere, and they also realized that. Uh, the economy of the country still relies heavily on manufacture. For the US, I think it's been going down, and I think a lot of, um, I forgot the name of an institute who led research, and they, s and they were showing that decreasing manufacture locally weakens the whole economy because of relying on other countries. So at some point, you become at the mercy of what happens somewhere else and you just respond instead of initiate. Then uh, let's go um, through a simple example. A very simple. So there we, let's take a designer who uploads, yeah? Question, or you're the designer? Okay, we have a designer there, so he uploads a design. Okay. I'm going with furniture again. Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Um, he sets, he builds, uh, he builds the blueprints for a new chair. He uploads the chair online uh, under the CERN license. And he sets a designer fee. So for every chair that will be sold, he will get paid uh, 100 US dollars, for example. Then um, this design must be built at least once to validate it. This is, this is where we're at. Uh, we're welcoming any suggestions or improvement, as well, of course. But So the design has to be built at least once. So we know it's something that can be built. Maybe in the future there will be ways to simulate and uh, skip this step. Then um, this, this build, the designer can keep it. It's not kept as a stock uh, somewhere. We just l now are able. We are now able to list the product on the marketplace. So you, clients will just browse the marketplace, see the chair, and they can order. Let's say they or order twenty of these chairs for their huge house. And uh, let's say the designer is in Singapore and the client is in Canada. So 
we will uh, match the order uh, with a manufacturer whose, whose skills match what is required and the local manufacturer or manufacturers receives the order and builds them. Once the quality is approved, the manufacturers uh, send the product to the client and the, the money that the client put online to buy these is distributed to the designer and the manufacturer. Of course, actually, the manufacturer get, get paid, gets paid before building, so he's able to get the materials. Um, here's, a, here's a use case that we, that we did in Iraq with Field Ready to have 3D printed animals in soap to incentivize children to wash their hands. And uh, this is one of the examples of one too many contracts. Here the challenge is having a contract between one buyer, which is Field Ready, and many small manufacturers who ha just have a 3D printer and know how to make soap, which is very basic. You just melt soap that already exists. And there's no, there's no easy solution to have this one-to-many contract. So this is one of the things where we, we work uh, to make it easy. Again, the summary, exactly the same slide as earlier, but uh, as a recap, we have a marketplace for open source hardware manufacturing, makernet.org. We have open standards, openknowhow.org, and open nowhere, which will be built shortly. And I want to invite you to join us by uploading your designs and sell them or uh, take part in developing the standards. That's all. Thank you. That is fascinating. I have at least half a dozen of my own questions. Uh, obviously, <laughs> as moderator, I will yield to everybody else's first. But before I do that, I would point out that unfortunately we started a bit late and we've actually now run into the break. And so if people want to take a, a tea break at this moment, uh, it's, there's 15 minutes left. So we're sort of hanging out for that. Um, so I think I'll, I'll invite questions, but those who yes. want to go for the break, please go now. Um, Harish. The, yep. Two. Uh, we are so. What oh, works? Sorry. Please, please repeat the question. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, how many people have gone through the process, and what type of products? So, we, two people have been through the process. One is us, of course, to test what we built, and the other is field ready. Um, the type of products are very simple. We only do 3D printing, laser cutting, and CNC like the basics that you can find in Fab Labs, because we rely on uh, the, the, the most distributed manufacturers we can find are Fab Labs, and they usually have these three pieces of equipment. So we already have a network of uh, a thousand plus small manufacturers around the world. This is our test case, and if we make it work with that, I think we can start thinking bigger. So it's usually like one step processes and we haven't gone into electronics or um, uh, computer stuff yet. You mentioned the CERN open hardware license. Yes. In fact, that's three licenses. Do you mean any of the three or do you mean one in particular? Um, CERN o, uh, OHL 2.1, I think now, yep. or 2.0. That's three licenses. Okay. Um, they are called, hang on, sorry, I've gone and lost the page. It basically, it's degrees of um, permissivity. S strongly reciprocal, weak reciprocal, and permissive. CERN OHLS, CERN OHLW, and CERN OHLP. Yep, so uh, on the website, exactly like on GitHub, you can choose which license when you start a repository and you can change. So the guy here is um, Andrew Katz. He's the, he's the person who, who wrote these licenses. And we've been talking with him to to make sure um, we are not experts in licensing, so we wanted to have his opinion if things match, if there's a problem with us being a company, or how, how does it work if the blueprints get out and everything seems to be in order. We are perfectly okay with having people getting all the, design, all the designs out of MakerNet 
as long as they follow the the licensing, which is just uh, keep the trail of who and uh, what improvements have been made. And what you've talked about uh, designer fees. So yes. in, in an open context, isn't that somewhat voluntary? Sorry? Isn't that somewhat voluntary? What's what what prevents another designer simply picking it up and uh, making a derived work available? Yes. Um, there's no easy answer for that. I think uh, that's that's the risks of of doing open things. So we would not in the future we would not I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. We would try to avoid uh, files that are that are copies. Uh, compu in terms of uh, computation, we can easily check that. Other than that, yes, it's a challenge, and uh, we I think we rely on human honesty and intelligence, which might be a flow in the design. I think I think just try it and see what works and what doesn't, because yes. branding I think becomes part of it. You can certainly readily require that. Licensees get licenses to the design, but not to the use of any branding. And this is more or less what goes on with uh, high-end textile manufacture, where the knockoffs are not just similar; they're made in the same factories by the same people using the same materials, the same tools, off-shift. Yep. So there really isn't a difference. But then you, you then get into, into a branding thing. So it's it's not really limited to open um, open source hardware. It's actually already the case yes. for sort of at least high-end branded stuff. Um, any other questions in the room? No? Oh, cool. Um, I might want to ask, ask one more of my long list. You mentioned the culture books at the beginning yes. of the talk as part of the rationale, but don't, haven't identified what they are. Sorry? Can you give us more information about what those books are? So these that books? Titles, authors? So my f oh, the author is uh, Ian M. Banks. He's uh, Scottish, I think. He's dead now, sadly. Um, there were no adaptation of his books uh, on TV or cinema, but I think it should uh, arrive quite soon, as they are great. He wrote uh, at least a dozen of the culture books. I haven't read them all, and it's a, it's a super advanced future where um, humans, I mean, they're, it's not clear if they come from Earth or not, but they, they do? Yeah, they're human, but... Yep, so um, it's super advanced and you have AIs everywhere. Humans are uh, enhanced to a point where they can basically do whatever they like and there's no risk and no death, death threat. And they can uh, have anything they want at any time provided by these uh, super AIs. Uh, and some of them are ships, spaceships, and they're very funny in a in a quite in a British way of uh, funny. Cool. I, I just wanted to identify them. And so I the uh, wiki page calls it culture series. But yeah, Ian yes, Banks. Yes, you're right. Uh, I could have it. provided more information. All right, well, let's wrap.